I'm CT. When I'm not hosting podcasts, I live in the real world. I mean, everybody has to work, right? Well, my job happens to be CS, customer service, solutions, relationships, and generating motivation to keep my team pumped up and connected to every single guest that comes into that store to buy one thing or a full basket full of things. This is CTCS, episode number 31. History keeps repeating itself. Does the body truly heal? Even though I take three days off from customer service, uh, the day you go back, it's it's like you're you're so stiff, you're so oh my god! And you know I'm not the only one in retail that uh, goes through this. You can see it in everybody around you, and all you can do is just try to motivate them to keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward. And so you got to do that with yourself as well. So I'm starting things off on this transition walk by that push. You know, push yourself into that area. Go do the best that you can do today and be proud of it because there are people in this world that don't have the freedom that we have to go do retail. A huge part of customer service is making sure that the bathrooms are running perfectly and when you walk in and you've got a flood in the women's bathroom, you've got to get to work immediately. Come on. The good news is it's a sink. It's not the, the toilet or anything like that, but you know, there's nothing worse than a clogged up sink. And, you know, with people that are, you know, you know, getting food and stuff like that, you've got to make sure that, you know, that it, it looks just as nice or brand new. And that's the secret for McDonald's. That's why they're number one with families and stuff like that is because their bathrooms are spotless. We just got word that one of our electronic carts for the handicap is uh, about a mile and a half away from the store. Somebody uh, was caught riding it down the street and uh, they pulled him over. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, they pulled him over and, and said, you, you take it back to the store or, or we'll call them and they can come pick it up. And the guy got off the, uh, the electronic card and, and, uh, and said, let, let have the store come, come get it. So I'm on this big hike right now to, to go get the missing electronic card. Been walking a ways here, coming up to the place where the, the cart was pulled over. I'm hoping that it's still here. Um, beautiful day, windy. But uh, I, I still think it's kind of funny that they pulled the guy over. And uh, so it should be right around the corner here. It's like taking you live to the scene, right? So it's true crime for you. I'm not seeing the cart. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> what a hike over here, though. Whew. Okay. Let's pick up the cord. We don't need to drag it and wreck it or anything like that. Um, people, people are really gutsy. They really are with uh, with things like this. I mean, these carts are, you know, they cost a lot of money, and uh, and so and so they, they they think they can just take it and just and just go away with it. So, um, okay, I'm currently riding this electronic cart, going maybe a mile an hour. <laughs> it looks so stupid. I know it does. Well, it's been about 25 minutes, and I'm still putting my way through the city streets in a grocery store cart, an electronic one at that. I, I can I can see the grocery store. I've, I've got cars behind me. This this is absolutely amazing. Okay, <laughs> they're, they're saying, can you hear them honking? Because I'm moving so slow. It's, um, oh my God! I think I think chickens can move faster than this. But okay, I've just got across a major intersection. There's the store. And I mean, what, what's so funny about this is that the store looks like it's right there, but dry, going at the speed that I'm going, the store, it's like, it's like a distant mountain range. Oh, now we're really deep into the parking lot here. The, uh, the store is right there. Cars are coming up on me like you wouldn't believe. Had to go and rescue the cart, man. Someone took it. They got pulled over, so I had to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's been a cart napping. <laughs> Today is cleaning day at the grocery store, and that means that we are dusting everything. We're, you know, making the store look look beautiful, basically. And I mean, we used to do that all the time at the movie theater as well, but um, for some reason... Um, 
the, the pollen is so thick this year that, that it's blowing through the front door and it's turning everything pollenized. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So uh, my, my uh, job today is to walk around the store and just dust everything. And there is just so much of it. And, and this, this, is, this is why when, when I drop a piece of fruit or something to the floor and they go, oh, it's fine, it's fine. I, I go, no, you, you, you don't know what's really on this floor. I, I sweep this floor. We just got word in customer service that a gentleman uh, has uh, literally taken the electronic basket again. And it's not the same gentleman. I, we know that for a fact. But it was uh, the, uh, um, the cart was full. And he just kept on driving, shouted out a bunch of very, very bad cuss words, and, and just kept going. And see, once they're outside, we, we can't do anything. An update on the electronic cart being swiped a second time today. Uh, they did find it about a block away. And it, it still gets me that, that they, were, they, were, they never got off the cart. They just, and that thing was moving slow. You, you were with me earlier today, moving slow. It's because they knew we weren't going to come after them. We did not see them take it. They made a beeline for the door. They were already out the door when our minds were basically going, oh, he, he didn't pay for that. So you call security and security, you know, does what they do. But, but they, they found it and the cart is back home again. Transition walk, day number two. After yesterday, with the <laughs> the stealing of the electronic carts, twice in one day of all things. Maybe it happens more often than I think, and just people just you know uh, bring it back somehow, some way. But uh, the dull roar of people with their leaf blowers, jets flying over, neighbors having conversations, you know, and I have to escape the studio to go be at a grocery store. Um, God damn, what what is it like? to have time with your neighbors anymore. Um, ever since I started CS, I, I, I've not been with them. We, we just, you know, I mean, we're on such opposite schedules. They're not up as late as I am, and uh, they're, not, they're already gone by the time that I start moving outside. They've asked me to come in early today. And the reason why is because people aren't showing up at work again, and uh, uh, I don't know the reason why. The uh, why why you know they keep calling in, and I, I think it's because there is no accountability. But that's just an old guy. That's an old guy talking about the young kids, and I'm sure they go, "That old man, what is he even doing here? Come on, bend over and pick that thing up from the floor. Come on, old man, it'll take you a week to get down there." Well, this isn't how I wanted my day to start off. You know, I thought I was a, a boy of good deeds, but I walk in and they. And one of the assistant managers goes, did you have a problem with a $100 bill? And I said, you know, I had one that I questioned last night, but it, it left the mark. I mean, pull it out. I'll show you. It, it left the mark on it. And, uh, uh, but that was fake. It was fake. Um, which is shocking to me because 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm the one that's busting them. And people are arguing with me saying, no, it's real. It's real. It's real. But uh, it ended up being fake. And so <sighs> just brush it off your shoulders. Does a lucky penny ever run out of luck? No, it's a good question because I'm in the men's room and there is a penny on the floor next to the stool. Is it a lucky penny or has your luck run out? Do you pick it up or do you walk away? Wow, our night team did not deserve what just happened. Um, Friday night, people are coming in from restaurants. Uh, they've had too much to drink. And a woman comes in to get food for her dog. And obviously she's upset about something. And every word is F this, F that, F you, F, 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 F. And the guests, we're trying to close the store at 10 o'clock. You know, it becomes a visual. So people want to watch what's going to be happening. You know, it's moments like this that I would like to record them to show you that this is what really goes on at a grocery store during the, the final hours and things like that. But, you know... I still have to preserve the privacy of those because, you know, I don't have the permission to record their voices, but the experience, I mean, we're, you know, just, we thought she was going to come after each and every one of us. And thank God for security because security was right there on it. Day number three, walking into the store right now. My body is killing me. Uh, it's a very cold, cold day. And uh, so... One of the things I try to do to get into the mood to be in the store is as I'm walking in and I see guests coming out, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy that they stepped in and wish them a good day and all that kind of stuff just so I can get into the mindset that, I mean, it's showtime the very second I walk into the store. And right now I'm about three feet from getting into the store. All right. Wish me luck. This is a major first. Um, we got busted with a $100 bill the other day. 
and we've talked about it on this particular episode. Uh, but today, uh, somebody passed a fake $10 bill. And on that $10 bill, the cashier did not look at it. It says, for movie company use only. How did it get passed? The, the, the person on the register. I mean, you, you've got to be able to look at this money because there's a lot of fake stuff that's being passed right now. I love it when guests share their recipes with us. Uh, they're talking about uh, doing, like, like if they're serving chicken and they get the, the bullion cubes. I don't know that kind of stuff. And they put the bu- bullion cubes in there and it makes uh, the uh, the chicken taste so much better. And then we were talking beef today and she, she had to have beef bullion because, you know, she's going to let it uh, soak uh, for, for like overnight and then tomorrow she's going to cook it and she's very convinced that it's going to make that beef so much better so you know you, you learn and, and the way you learn is to listen I don't know what has been happening this weekend but for some reason I've just taken note of this because I'm a people watcher but a lot of hand holding uh, people m- men and women women and women men and men holding onto hands now I don't know if it's national holding hands weekend or whatever it is but you know it really makes you feel good when you see people holding onto hands Jesus it's a it's a crazy Saturday night um, teenagers uh, are doing a sit-in uh, they came in and got in uh, aisle number six and uh, about 25 of them just sat down <sighs> You know, what are they doing wrong? You you, you can ask them, please. You know, it's it's not good for you to be on the floor. That's kind of a fire hazard. But, uh, but yeah, they they pulled off a sit-in tonight. And we've got a very, very drunk, middle-aged woman in the store. She's uh, walking around the store um, eating potato chips that we saw her open. And uh, actually, she's not even walking. She's stumbling. And uh, we did see that she came in from her car. We're, we're going to have to call authorities on this because she's really, really drunk. And, and so we're going to call 911 and see if we can keep her in the store long enough to where they can, uh, um, you know, take care of the situation. Because she, she should not be in a car at all tonight. I told you it was a crazy night. I, I told you it was going to be. I mean, we had to sit in with the kids, and then we have the extremely drunk woman. And now we have a guy who's just banging on the door saying he needs an ambulance. I'll keep you posted. He's in the lobby, sitting on the floor, almost like a fetal position, and uh, says that he, he needs an ambulance. And uh, um, his eyes are just totally not there. Not, he's, he's Mentally, he's just he's just not there. Uh, he's stumbling with his words. And, and uh, so we've got security on this, and security has called an ambulance. And, uh, uh, and this has happened at closing time. So last night we had the crazy woman dropping the F-bombs. Tonight uh, we wrap up the evening with somebody who needs help. And I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for this man that if he really does need an ambulance, uh, which I'm going to tell you he does. He really does need it. And we're going to pray for him. I think on this fourth day, I'm going to let nature do the talking as we transition. what I listen to when I come out on these walks. The solitude of spring giving birth to the dogwoods, the flowering. You can tell that today is Palm Sunday. There's just that vibration in the air. First thing today, fourth day, you know, yeah, I had a mistake on Thursday with the $100 bill, but new manager's in place, and of course, they take you to the side, and they want to talk to you, and all that kind of stuff, and my my professionalism is, I'm not going to react, I'm not going to sit there and get all nervous and things like that, you know, it's like, shh. but somewhere along the line, I just want to say, will you please just shut up? I don't know if it's because our arms are tired, or it's just there's an enormous amount of people inside the store today, but uh, every time we turn around, we're, uh, there were cash registers people are are breaking bottles and they're breaking you know jars and things like that kombucha to uh, wine to beer and i mean poor poor register number one it's happened twice already just in in the past 20 minutes and it's like wow and so we we gave her some time off to go rest those arms to figure out you know if maybe that's what the situation is one of the things that I've started to do is, uh, I, I think I started this maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, when I take a break, this is not an ego thing talking. When I, when it's time for me to take a, a dinner break, I don't want to talk. I, I don't. I've been talking for like today. My, I went uh, six hours and 
15 minutes without any kind of a break. And and so you go into the break room and people want to have these conversations. They want to gossip. They want to point fingers and say, I'm, I'm not there. I, I'm just not going to do it. So uh, my my place for the past couple of weeks is just go go sit in the Ford. Go sit in the Ford, eat dinner in the Ford, the front seat, which is is very uncomfortable. I mean, especially if I'm going to sit here and, and eat some fried chicken or, or do something just to get some protein back in the body. But yeah, this is my new office, man. It's quiet at least. I I thought this this kind of stuff was over, but you know, no shows. People that I mean, they don't even call. They don't call. They don't. They they just don't show up. And we have we have four today, and and here here's the repercussions. Okay, now today we've had a pretty good team on the floor. Today I said I didn't say tonight. Today we've had a pretty good team on the floor, and and the majority of the people that have been that have been on the registers have been your customer service. So that, that's that's the professional level. That's your A team that's out there doing that. And uh, but tonight though, tonight, as of uh, eight thirty, it'll be just me in the store, just me. On a Sunday night, and Sunday nights are usually those those nights where you know people are going to the store late. They're buying large baskets full of, of food because they're getting ready for a new school week. Or or here's the big thing: uh, this next week is spring break, and so they're they're leaving town, and so they're 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 spending four and five hundred dollars on on groceries. So, who gonna be a big one tonight? My beggar has stepped up his game. He's doing the putbacks. And, uh, you know, he's, he's working uh, really hard to make sure that this store gets in shape behind the scenes. And we've got a, uh, another person on the cash register that's decided to stay a little bit longer. All right, it's showtime with one cashier and uh, one, somebody in uh, self-checkout. And then we've got a bagger. And uh, uh, it's, it's a crowded store. Um, and the, the security officer came over and asked if everything was okay. And I said, I'm focused. You're, you're seeing a focused CT. CT. And, uh, and I've got to stay focused, and I've got to run register number one as well as customer service up until 10 o'clock. So um, focus is, is where we're at. Okay, that's going to wrap things up. Uh, that hour and a half, very stressful. Uh, money orders at $2,500, people buying lottery tickets because tonight the lottery, or it's uh, Mega Millions. And uh, big, 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 big loads because it's spring break. and. Uh, so I was running between register one and uh, and customer service back and forth, you know, and uh, but you know, and you just got to stay focused. I mean, it's like, you know, one of the things that uh, I learned as a martial artist is how to properly breathe, to breathe right, so that you can uh, make sure that uh, um, you can find yourself in a victory.